Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at an all new Windows based tablet from a company called Aldo Cube. Now, when it comes down to it, I'm a big fan of Windows tablets, but nothing's really hit the market at a decent price point with good performance in a while. Of course, there are some powerful Windows based tablets out there like the new ROG X13 Flow, but that's around $1,800 and it's basically a gaming laptop with a detachable keyboard. We've also got the Microsoft Surface lineup. The high-end stuff is really expensive, and when it comes to the Go series, uh, the CPU does leave a lot to be desired. But when it comes to the new Aldo Cube iWork GT, they've opted to use an Intel Tiger Lake CPU, and this one here just happens to have the i5-1135G7. And when it comes down to it, it's actually a really great performing mobile chip. And before we dive any deeper, I just want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. Now, there is one thing to keep in mind. When upgrading your PC using a key like this, you can change your GPU, you can change the RAM, the hard drives, the CPU. The only thing that'll stop this key from working in the future is swapping out the motherboard. But they're definitely cheap enough. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So this is known as the iWork GT, and inside of the box you're going to get the tablet itself, a 45 watt quick charger, and I believe they're selling the detachable keyboard separate like a lot of these manufacturers. And I think there's two models of these detachable keyboards. One does have a built-in hinge, this one is just the folio model, but it does have a touchpad built in. Overall, the tablet looks great. We've got an 11 inch 1200 by 2000 IPS display. It's got a glass cover over it and the rest of the unit is fully constructed of aluminum. Taking a look around the tablet, over here on the left hand side, we do get a micro HDMI port and this is HDMI 1.4. We also have two full function USB type C ports. Over on the right hand side, micro SD card slot, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a full size USB 3.0 port. Taking a look at the top of the tablet, we've got our volume rocker, power button, and some more ventilation. This is an actively cooled tablet, so there is a built-in fan. Actually glad to see more ports than usual when it comes to these Windows tablets nowadays. Uh, having that full-size USB port definitely helps out, and two USB Type-C full function ports is a big plus. When it comes to the specs of the iWork GT, they're offering this in three different models. You can pick them up with a Tiger Lake i3, i5, or i7. This one happens to have the i5-1135G7, 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 2.4 GHz with a turbo up to 4.2. Built-in Iris XE graphics up to 1.3 GHz, and remember this is the i5 version, so it only has 86 execution units. 8 GB of LPDDR4X running at 4,266 MHz, a 256 GB SSD, micro SD card support, an 11 inch IPS display at 2000 by 1200, Wi Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and right out of the box, this was running Windows 11. All right, so here it is. Overall, it's a very snappy experience, whether you're on battery or wall power. Now, there is a big difference here because on battery, the CPU in this is running at about 14 watts. But once you plug it into the 45 watt adapter that's included with the tablet, it takes that from 15 watts up to 20, and on the boost side of things, it'll go all the way up to 30. So you will get much better performance when you're plugged into the wall. And of course, there are ways to set this up to run at 20 watts on battery, but you're not gonna get great battery life once this is running at 20 watts with a boost up to 30. And 20 watts seems to be about the max the CPU cooler can handle. Uh, while gaming at 20 watts, it does get a little hot. We're up there at 88, 90 degrees Celsius, but it didn't thermal throttle on me. It's got a built-in active cooling system, and I'd say it's good for around 20 watts. Any higher than that, it's going to thermal throttle pretty quickly. 
First thing we're going to test here is some YouTube video playback. We're just going to go with a 4K 60 video. I know we don't have a 4K screen here, but this is going to give us a good idea of how well it's going to perform. And with the i5 1135G7 in the past, I've never had any issues with 4K playback, especially paired up with something like Wi-Fi 6 or Ethernet. We've got Wi-Fi 6 here. 4K 60, stats for nerds on screen. I know it's a bit hard to see. By the end of this video, zero drop frames. So we're good to go there. I mean, as a media playback device, this is gonna work out just fine, whether you wanna stream your favorite content or run it from a micro SD card or external drive. It's really up to you. The next thing I did was run a few benchmarks and the first one on the list is Geekbench 5, single core, 1301, multi, 4746. I've definitely seen the i5 1135G7 much higher than this, at least on the multi-core side of things. But given how thin and light this is, it's not bad at all. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark. Total score here, 9,810. And the final one I ran here was 3D Mark Night Raid. We got a total score of 13,357. And remember, this tablet's running between 15 watts and 20 watts. If the cooling system could handle it, I would take this up to 30, and it would definitely unlock the potential of this chip. But the way it sits with the cooling system and battery right now, 20 watts is about the max. But we're still going to test out some gaming on this because I'm really interested to see how this thing performs. First on the list, Street Fighter V. We're at 720 by 800. I've got a low medium mix going on. I do like having those textures set to medium. Mostly everything else is on low, but we're not doing any kind of scaling here except for the main resolution of 1280 by 800. It's actually running really well. We're at 60 FPS, and by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Good. Moving over to one of my all-time favorite games, we have Skyrim. This is the original version. This is just the one I prefer. We're at 1080p high settings, and it runs at 60. I did see it dip down to 59, but that's something I would never notice if I didn't have that frame counter on. Overall, this tablet can definitely handle Skyrim, and even on battery, we're good to go at 60, high settings, 1080p. The Witcher 3 did much better than I thought it would. I know for a fact that at 720p low settings, this chip can do 60 FPS at the correct wattage. If we take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you'll see we're only running about 21 to 22 watts and our CPU temperature is on up there. I mean, we're at 88 to 90 degrees Celsius, kind of fluctuating between. And the fan on this is kicked up, but it's really not that loud. I mean, even up close to it, it doesn't get too loud. It's trying its hardest to cool this i5 off. And this is really why I mentioned that 20 watts is about the max this thing's gonna be able to handle. And the final game I wanted to test here was God of War, where at low settings, 720p, and unfortunately, it's just not going to give us a steady 30. Again, the i5 1135G7 at around 30 to 35 watts can run this really well. Original settings, 720p. I usually get an average of around 40 FPS. But with the way the tablet set up at 20 watts, it's just really struggling even to hit 30. Now it's time to see how this little tablet handles emulation. And first up, we have PS2 using PCSX2, DirectX 11 back in. We've got Soul Calibur 3, not the easiest game to emulate, but it's running really well. And by the way, this is at 720p, so we do have a little bit of an upscale going. With this game here, 720p is probably going to be the max for this tablet, the way it's set up right now. But there are other games where you can go up to 1080 with it just fine. Another one I wanted to test here was some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. Here we have Auto Modalista, one of the harder ones to emulate on lower end chips. And with this one, I didn't see a dip below 60 at all. Even around these corners here, if you've ever tested this game out on lower end hardware, you know how hard this little area can be. We're at a steady 60, and this little thing handles GameCube and Wii really, really well. I've done some battery life testing with the iWork GT and over on their website they claim that this will get up to 6 hours of battery life and it's really close. I mean for video playback with the screen around 60% I was able to get 5 hours and 20 minutes out of it. If you want to do nothing but gaming on battery with this you can expect around 2 hours of battery life given that this is running at around 15 watts and that's just the CPU side of things. That's not taking into account the speakers and the screen, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. 
It does support 45 watt PD quick charging and they claim from zero to 50% takes around 40 minutes. So we're not that far off from other laptops on the market around the same price point. I do love the screen on this. It looks really good. And I think 11 inches is perfect for a carry around tablet, be it a Windows tablet like we have here or something like the Galaxy Tab S8. The active cooling system they have in here does work for the wattage it's running at, but I do wish it was a little beefier. That way we could up the wattage and get a little better performance when it comes to gaming, but it's not meant to be a gaming tablet. Now, the one thing I would love to see changed is the volume. I'm not exactly sure if it's a driver issue or whatnot, but at 100%, it really doesn't get that loud. And we do have a dual stereo speaker set up in this, but it definitely needs some more volume. Even a little bit of overdrive would be nice, but if they would have added a quad speaker set up here with quad one watt speakers, it would have been much better on the sound side of things. But yeah, on the channel, I do test a lot of Android tablets. It's few and far in between when I can get my hands on a good Windows tablet, but this is one of the most powerful Windows tablets that I've tested so far. And when it comes to Windows tablets, we don't have that much to work with. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are some really high-end gaming tablets out there on the market right now. And basically, we have the Microsoft Surface line. And with the Go line, which is kind of around the same price point of the iWork GT, the CPU in this tablet here definitely beats out the Go line of the Microsoft Surface series. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Aldo Cube iWork GT, I will leave a link in the description. I'll leave a link to their website. You can also pick this up on Amazon. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.